everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So I know it's a long way till Christmas, really, a hundred days and six, so 106 days till Christmas. But I think it's probably about time everyone's starting to think about it. So I thought that for the next couple of weeks, three, four weeks or so, we would do one Christmassy thing a week. And I'm going to start off with this very simple, traditional, but rather cute Robin. And I'm going to start by introducing you to the colors that we are, I'm gonna leave that there. You can see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the colors. The colors that we're most likely to use for most of the Christmas paintings. So if any of these you haven't got, you might want to think about getting hold of them. Um, okay, so I'm going to, first of all, of course, everybody needs a tube of Winsor & Newton designer gouache in white because we will be painting a lot of snowflakes. So that's the first thing that I would recommend. Um, I'm familiar with that particular brand. There are others, but it must be gouache because it needs to be um, opaque because obviously it has to show up. And although there are things like Chinese white, which is a transparent white, the purpose of Chinese white isn't to um, show up on top of things like white dots. It's to kind of dilute down a color. So for example, if you were using permanent rose and you added Chinese white, you'd get a nice pastel pink. That's what Chinese white is mostly used for to make pastels, let's say. So you don't have to buy a whole set of pastels. Anyway, so that's um, designer's gouache, which is watercolour, but it has body. It has basically chalk in it, which makes it look chalky. Okay, colour number one, cobalt blue. This one is by Old Holland. Any brand will do. I recommend Windsor & Newton as being pretty reasonable for people in England. And if you're in the States, um, probably Grumbacher is probably your best bet. Or Daniel Smith, if you're happy to spend a bit extra. Um, da Vinci is good too in the States. Traditional names that have um, been around for a hundred years or so, at least you know what you're getting, is going to be quality. I've been um, using Old Holland just recently. Um, it's a European make, it's not all that well known, I just wanted to give it a try and, and it's good. It's very bright and it's great but uh, you don't have to have that. Dioxazine mauve, that's a kind of violet color. Um, we use that a lot, not just in its pure state though, mostly mixed with greens and things to make really nice dark darks. So that's dioxazine mauve. I will put all this on the website. So if you pop over to the website, to the blog for today's Robin, you'll find everything you need to know there and links to Amazon and Jackson's and so on. Um, the third colour that we use a lot of for birds and things like that is Burnt Sienna. That's a nice, rich, chestnutty sort of brown. It comes in handy for lots of things neat, like the back of the robin there. That's got a lot of Burnt Sienna in it. Also mixed with blues, it gives you very, very nice darks too. Then Sap Green is transparent green, and that's really good for the basis of your greenery um, to make it quicker, to make uh, a nice pine tree or some holly and stuff like that. Often, if you've got a ready-made green that you can mix other colors into, like quinacridone gold or transparent yellow to give you a variety of greens, that's really a great color to have. So that's transparent, uh, sorry, sap green. Um, alizarin crimson is a good sta uh, staple color. That's uh, always useful. Um, brings to mind um, holly berries and things like that. You need a good, decent red. And as well, permanent rose, which is a completely different kind of red. This is a very old tube. I don't know where on earth that came from. This is a bit of a historic monument. It must be at least 20 years old. I don't, it must've got to the bottom of the drawer or something because 
it's still in absolutely fine condition, so don't worry about using old paints. Nothing wrong with them. Um, so that's that. And then transparent yellow, which is what it says it is. And that's also a very useful colour. Mixes well. So all of these colours are, are more or less pure. There's maybe two different pigments in some of them. Mustn't forget the quinacridone gold, that one there. You can see I use a lot of that one because I've got a big tube of that and even that's getting empty. But um, so there we are. And of course you will need probably a little bit of black um, for the eye of the bird or you can use a fine liner pen or something like that if you prefer. Um, what was I just going to say? Had another thought there. Ah, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, salt. Salt, fine salt, ordinary salt. Um, I'm going to use that today to give the texture behind the bird in the sort of slightly um, snow speckled sky that he's got behind him. So I think that's everything we need. I'm going to be using today a draw well brush, but or should I say, and I will also be using my black tulips. This is the size 10 round black tulip um, synthetic brush. These are really good starter brushes for beginners. If you want to order a set of those, they're on Amazon or you can go to the direct link. Um, if you're in the States or England, they do ship to you. Um, otherwise, Amazon is probably your best bet. So that's that. and. Uh, I may or may not use other brushes, so I'll let you know as I go along if I do. Now I'm just going to show you what some of these colours look like. Um, well, all of them actually, just so that you can see whether you've got any of these. And also to warm myself up, because not because I'm cold, but because I haven't painted anything all day. And I think it's a good idea to just do that first. Um, so that's uh, cobalt blue in a very dilute wash. This is sap green. And I would hardly ever use that on its own. I would mix that most of the time with quinacridone gold or um, burnt sienna, anything to, to dull that down a little bit and make it more like the sorts of greens that we really see. This is, I'm doing this fairly, fairly pale, but uh, you get the idea, I'm sure. And then this is um, dioxazine mauve. Now look how what a strong colour that is. There's hardly anything there, but it's really powerful. And if you mix it with burnt sienna, you get a really nice purple, rather than that rather harsh synthetic colour that, uh, that that is. Quinacridone gold, it lifts any painting. And I use that as an underlayer often. Paint on top of it and whatever you put on top comes out better. This is permanent rose, which is a quite bluish sort of pinky kind of color. Mixes well, like I said, uh, I've done that one. This is transparent yellow. I should put that there so you can see the difference between that one and quinacridone. This is much warmer, isn't it? Um, Elizarine, Elizarine Crimson, the staple red. Again, you can see, I should put that there, how different that is from permanent rose. Sometimes you can substitute one, one for the other, but um, often you need the blueness of permanent rose versus the I'm not quite sure what you would call that. And then there is one other colour that we ought to have, which is a sort of orangey red, um, a cadmium red. Again, that's different. Another kind of red, that's a very orangey red. So really, at the end of the day, when it comes to it, basically, you can do most things with these colours. So I'm going to pop that aside for a minute. And um, we're going to think about robins. Um, the sketch for this robin is going to be up on the website tonight. This is a robin which I painted last year. One of the very first videos that we put up on the on YouTube. I didn't even narrate it. I just 
um, did the painting and it was one of our sort of trial ones at the very beginning. So I thought it would stand being done again with a bit of my yakking over the top. So hopefully that's okay with all of you. Now the background of this I'm going to do afterwards. I'm going to do the, the bird first and for this particular bird I'm going to wet the whole area first of all, wet the entire bird which I've just drawn in pencil, just ordinary pencil. Um, uh, as I said you can get the sketch and download that from the website. We've also got a new product going up soon which will be um, the first of our colouring book sets which are going to be available for Christmas and with nice covers on and everything so it's going to going to be a nice presentation. Okay so there's the birdie all wetted and um, like I said, I often, not always, but often start with um, quinacridone gold all over. So I'm going to do that today. I'm just going to pop in some quinacridone gold. I'm painting on um, Etival, Clairefontaine Etival paper today which is 100% cellulose, but that is not a bad thing for many reasons. I'm going to put in some blue around here for the shadow. And then I will look for and hopefully find some red. That's going to be the breast, I think. And, but first of all, I'll probably come in to the top of the bird. Bird's head. To make the burnt sienna darker, uh, rather than going to something like burnt umber, which is a bit of a dull old colour, I usually add um, cobalt blue to the burnt sienna. And then I'm going to put in the red here. I have got used to painting with the water brushes lately and uh, I must admit there is something to be said for a water brush. Okay so burnt sienna and cobalt blue again for the tail. I do recommend that you limit your palette to just a few colours. While this is wet I'm going to pop the legs in here and just pull those down. The more colours you have the more likely you are to end up with unpleasant blends. If you just stick to a limited palette like I've got here you can mix the colours that you need from the colours that you have and then you don't get unple unpleasant clashes. I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit more quinacridone down here and then I'm going to mix some violet with the burnt sienna to bring in over the top here. I'm trying to keep my head out of the way. I'm sure you don't want to watch, see the top of my head while I'm painting. I know I don't. So 
See what a beautiful chestnut colour the um, burnt sienna and the violet make. You wouldn't think so, would you? more down here to the top of the tail behind the body make it dark there and then let let it sort of go behind the bird a little bit might put a bit more of that in here and I'm gonna put his eye in might be a might be a good idea to do that now I should have done it at the beginning I forgot just drag the colour out from the bird itself to do the beak colour. I'm not going to play with that too much because I do like to let the whole thing kind of um, mingle and mix on the paper. But I will just put a little bit more of that there. And I know it's going to dry a lot lighter than it looks because that's what happens. Okay, so now let's have a go at the, the holly. And we'll do the same thing again. We'll just put a little bit of water on the holly leaf. And then I'm going to mix quinacridone gold with sap green. And then we'll put that in fairly liberally. And then what I like to do is to come in with a darker tone or two and just drop that in like that. And then I'll use the same colour for maybe this one over here. I won't bother wetting it because my brush is fairly well endowed. And that's another different colour, different green. Then I'll pick up some more quinacridone and put that in, just so that it blends. I've just got sort of hint of, hint of holly, essence of holly. A nice name, isn't it, Holly? I always remember when I was I was given this ghastly name, Diane. But when I was a kid, I wanted to be called either Holly or Heather. Isn't it strange? I wanted to be named after a plant. I'm sure, my parents were very insulted. I didn't like the name they'd given me. You never get it right as a parent, do you? Okay, and a bit more quinacridone in there, and that will let that kind of do its thing. And then I do quite like giving a centre vein in holly leaves using a sharp implement. I used to use a credit card, but since I became the proud owner of a glass pen, I found that that works much better. So I'll do that now. 
and then um, I can't I can't do it any longer I've got to use my water brush I'm going to pick up some quinacridone gold and paint these berries first of all with the quinacridone and then I'm going to drop in some red like that on one side and then I'm going to put violet underneath for the shadow like that so do that again quinacridone first and then red either any of your reds will do doesn't matter which because they all blend in and then the violet underneath and you can do that quite strong because that will blend too and anyway you want a bit of contrast and if you think it's a bit too much of a good thing just come back in with a bit more yellow and blend it in a bit when that's dry you can decide whether or not um, whether or not you want it redder depends whether you are going for a subtle look you know sort of what do you call it um, muted colors or whether you want them a bit brighter Oh, I think we, I was wondering about that. I was thinking probably we would want one or two over here. Mm -hmm. And then now we need a bigger brush, probably, to do the background. And I'm going to let that dry and then I might shape up his beak a little bit and uh, I'm not quite sure what. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to use the uh, cat's tongue from Zen Art, which I think is quite a good background painting brush. So I'm going to pretend that there's a little bit of sky around the back of him. So we'll do that first. And afterwards, we'll make him stand on some snow, probably. So this is um, going to be cobalt blue. So we'll mix up some quite nice cobalt blue and just dash that in loosely. Don't bother about coming right up against the the bird just do a kind of vignette kind of style, sort of faded out at the edges, like that. Make it a bit darker on, on one side than it is on the other. If you want, you can put a little bit of violet in to make it a little bit darker over this side. This is where the salt comes in. So when I did this last year, I did it by splashing water into the um, white paint, the blue paint, but you can you can do that if you want, if you don't like the salt effect, but the salt can be quite quite good at producing snow, so we do that. And then um, we're going to want some more, um, what do you call it, cobalt blue for down below here. And I'm just going to spread that out using my water brush.
And just one or two slight little bits there. Okay, and now we'll let it dry and we'll come back and see what needs to be done, if anything. So I'm just drying this painting off with a hairdryer because I wanted to make sure the salt areas were dry. And as you can see, it's curled like that, but we don't need to worry about that. Just turn it over. and it'll go flat again. So that's not a problem. Um, so now I'm just going to um, take it down a little bit so that I can keep it firm while I take off the uh, salt. So I'm just gonna hold it there with the tape and that. And um, I think the best way of taking the salt off, although it makes a horrible noise, is probably to scratch it with a good old cut up Ikea card. I found Ikea works the best. And uh, so there we are, we do that, and we can take this off, don't need that anymore. And I'll try to get this into the bin, not onto the floor. And there we are, we've got quite a nice um, snowy, icy effect there. And um, I think I just want to put a little bit more dark on that wing there. Um, a little bit of purple in the brown. And <clears throat> maybe and we'll soften that down a tiny bit. <clears throat> and um, as I said, the, uh, the colours do tend to fade away quite a lot. So depends on how, how you feel about it, but I don't know. I think I might be inclined to brighten it up a little bit with um, a little bit more, a little bit more blue there, a little bit more red. Make the breast a little bit redder. Okay, and we'll just let that dry too. So there's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to the channel, that would be really helpful. Always appreciate that very much indeed. If you want to download the sketch, um, just pop along to the website, dianenton.com, and uh, there you will not only find the free sketch to download, but lots of other sketches too, as well as a list of the materials that I used to make this uh, painting to do this painting and um, all the others as well of course and uh, then we've also got our blog where you can go to find out a little bit more about each painting and other allied subjects should you be interested um, plus of course there's our new shop which has uh, just opened and so far at the moment we've got a couple of mugs and a coloring book in there and there will be much more coming but uh, we're quite pleased with what we've done so far and hope you go and have a look and uh, think about us when it comes to um, supporting channels for Christmas and so on and so forth. Um, so have a look in the description below for other information and links to various different things such as Facebook groups that we have. And most of all, most important of all, so I've saved the best to last, 
We do have our channel membership up, up and running now. We have three levels starting at $2.99, um, which is um, the starter level where you get a couple of um, bonus uh, features. And as we go up in scale, you get more and more. So have a look at that. All you have to do is go to the, um, to the channel home page and you'll be prompted to join. Just click on join and that will give you information. It doesn't automatically join you. You're not going to be held to ransom or anything like that. Just click on join and you'll get a look at what's on offer. So with that, I shall let you go and uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a go at the Robin and see if it doesn't make you feel like Christmas is coming. So bye for now everybody, I'll see you again soon, bye bye for now, bye.